Ms. Bush. St. Louis, and I thank you, Chairman, for convening this hearing today. Director Ray, thank you for being here as well. Um, thank you for being here with us, taking this time. So as an activist and as an organizer from the front lines of the Ferguson movement, I am intimately aware of the tactics the Bureau has used when surveilling and investigating and intimidating activists like myself uh, from the height of the civil rights movement to Ferguson in 2014 to today. We now know that the Bureau did in fact investigate and surveil those protesting for racial justice and against police brutality. In anticipation of this hearing, I wrote to you on June 4th requesting access to all the information that the Bureau may have gathered about me since 2014, the Ferguson uprising and up to now. When can I expect to hear back from the Bureau regarding that information? Congressman, I, I was just recently told that you had sent uh, such a letter asking for information. As you know, we received thousands of requests for uh, files, as it were, uh, and there's a process for that. Uh, and I would be happy to have my staff follow up with yours to uh, help you understand how the process works, and that can give you a little bit better sense about timing and other uh, steps mm -hmm. that have to be uh, gone through. Okay. Uh, as you probably can determine from the way I've answered a lot of questions today, uh, I am very much a process guy. Ooh, that's uh, and fine. I want to make sure we follow the process here. Sure. Is it in the next seven days? Is it possible that we can get get this resolved? Um, possibly. I mean, we can go through the steps. I just want to. I'll have somebody follow up okay. with you about the we right follow process. Up. Okay, thank you. Um, but I ask because I'm concerned about the FBI's treatment of protesters. I want to walk through the FBI's response to the white supremacist insurrection on the Capitol and the FBI's response to mass protests that swept through the country last year seeking justice for George Floyd and for Breonna Taylor. Isn't it true that the department deputized and deployed thousands of federal law enforcement, including FBI personnel, in quote, response to the events related to civil unrest, in quote, during the summer of 2020? Yes or no is fine. Well, I'm not sure I have a yes or no answer to that. Uh, I, I don't know that the FBI, I don't recall the FBI being deputized for things. The FBI uh, fulfilled our mission, um, some of which I've described earlier in response to one of your colleagues' questions. Uh, but whether other agencies were deputized by the mm -hmm. Justice Department would be a question better referred to the Justice Department. Okay. Um, I think that the answer um, that we're looking for is, yes, we have um, this information. Um, we have evidence, um, we have evidence that the records that identify SWAT resources and special agent bomb techs, um, that they were deployed. That's what's in my hand. Um, what about, was the FBI authorized to use force in response to the January 6th white supremacist insurrection on the Capitol? Just a yes or a no. Was the, was the FBI authorized to use force in response to the white supremacist attack on, Jan, on January the 6th? Well, I think the, I'm not aware of a specific authorization to use force. I think the FBI has policies about its use of force, uh, and those policies would have been in effect on January 6th. Thank you. So you stated earlier that the Bureau does not surveil First Amendment protests, but Director Ray, isn't it true that the FBI did deploy some 120 surveillance aircrafts? I know it was alluded to earlier to monitor Justice for George Floyd protests um, around June 1st in Washington, D.C.? And that can just be a yes or a no. Well, again, I'm not sure it lends itself to a yes or no. We have specific policies uh, that govern our use of um, various uh, techniques and tools that we have to, uh, available to us, the Attorney General guidelines and the DIOG that I referred yeah. to earlier. Well, uh, and so the circumstances under which we would have used aviation assets over the course of the summer uh, would have been covered by those. So, um, yes. Um, director, here are the flight path records. I'd like to introduce this article that cites the flat, flight path records, uh, flight paths into the record. Was the FBI authorized to conduct surveillance or deploy surveillance aircraft and or drones in response to the January 6th white supremacist insurrection on the Capitol? Yes or no, I'm gonna, I would love for you to ask, answer that. 
Uh, I don't recall whether or not aviation assets were called for or used in the January. Well, you can just, that's fine. That's fine. I just don't know I just, off the okay. top of my head. Well, I mean, the evidence is clear. We've witnessed it with our own eyes. The Bureau has a white supremacy problem within its ranks. The choice to not pursue white supremacist violence, like what we saw on January 6th, is not because the Bureau does not have the resources or the statutory discretion to do so. It is a blatant dismissal of white supremacy as a threat. It is racist, it's unethical, it's unconscionable. Protesters last summer rose up to say, lives and they were violently removed with chemical weapons, pepper spray, tear gas, smoke canisters, stun grenades, and rubber bullets. That's why we as activists and protesters must continue to pursue transparency from the Bureau. And I'm talking to activists right now. File your four-year request. We are not a threat. Thank you and I yield back. General, the gentlelady yields back. Uh, this concludes today's hearing. We thank Director Ray for participating. Without objection, all members will have five legislative days to submit additional written questions for the witness or additional materials for the record. Without objection, the hearing is adjourned. Bye, Mr. Chairman. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, and I'm, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like unlike I've ever seen in a case, uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive 
uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.